Looks like it's gotten a little more free. Uh, me? Mm -hmm. I'm getting free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My morning workout. Getting a free workout. Up for the video. Yeah. Make it look like I got big muscles. <laughs> Ooh. That was a little better there. freer when you don't bolt it down. <clears throat> yeah. That smeared the uh, compound so I guess it re-energized. Oh, you can see it ground a lot away. Half half of that red marking is gone. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, there might, oh, there's more here. There's enough for a couple more times. Okay. Let's keep going. You roll out of that stuff. Well, it's got another full bubble of it in there, see? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, else you don't take much. See, there's as much on my fingers on the damn shaft, but. Well, you got a couple more goes at it. It makes a difference. Go ahead and install the cam where it belongs. Went on a little easier. Is that tighter though? A little bit. That's why you put all the, put the cam in there because the cam does affect <clears throat> how things work together. But you're just gonna put that one cam. That's the only one that matters. Because it's the only one touching the pinion shaft, huh? Yep. The other gears won't make it a little tighter, though, just by friction. If you put them all in there, you know. We only care about this. <coughs> What is that sound? What, tight cam, you mean? <laughs> uh, me 
be screwing up. Thrust wash is not where it belongs. Oh, so it's grinding. It's binding down there because it's not in the right spot. Now it's not binding. Yeah. It took a lot of drag off. <laughs> I bet it would. <laughs> Might have bent the washer maybe. Ooh. Yeah. Whew. So now with the thrust washer drop down like this, so it's in a cock sideways and you're hearing a cam rubbing hard right in this one spot. <clears throat> so I pulled it back up so now it's just hanging lightly. It's a lot freer. So you're probably moving the engine at just past idle speed it's right now. It's not free enough to come up, but it's working. Is that about how fast it would be idling? Probably faster than that. Like 2,500. How many beats per minute am I doing? I don't know. Probably like 600 or something. <clears throat> You ever heard of a motorcycle with front wheel and rear wheel drive? Yep. Have you ever seen one? Yep. It's called a Rook. What the fuck do you call that piece of crap? <laughs> they made it in the 60s and it was made to go upside the mountains for logging. Oh, there's no modern. I'm thinking of a Rukon, but I don't know if that's the name or not. Why don't they use a motorcycle for logging? Because it's cheaper than a horse. <laughs> not as expensive as a Jeep. You can't train mountain goats. Mm. Yeah, I remember logging going up mountains. It's out, in, it's out there in the middle of nowhere. And two wheels a lot better moving around than four wheels. You can get a lot more places with two or four. But they weren't pulling can, logs or supplies. No, but you can drag cables and carry shit and <clears> stuff <throat> like that. That's true. Or just get the uh, boss out there so you can say something important. Like, get the goddamn back to work, you dumbasses. And something like that. <laughs> Give the boss something fun to ride. Cut that tree over there. <laughs> Wrong one, get the other one. Not that one. <laughs> Oh, that one had the frog on it. You can't cut that one down. Oh well. Oh, it fell on a tor tortoise. Uh oh. Oh well. Quick bury it. <laughs> Faster. <laughs> That's idle speed. Maybe we hit 650 that time. <laughs> it's tiring. At work, I'll tell people to go work on this plant or this tree or bush and then they get over there and they start working I'm like no not that one they go, oh what what too late. yeah too late <clears throat> okay I need a rest break we'll be back all right go for it your turn okay you yeah, had practice see if you're any better now too much banging pretty hard. He makes it look a lot easier. How many pounds of pull is that? I don't know. It's enough. 
about 10 pounds of pull each time I come up <laughs> and yeah. go down. Oh yeah. It's both directions, you gotta go up and down with pours. Then you gotta time it. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's working pretty hard doing that. We get going, what are you resting for? Where's the guy whose bike this actually is? Why isn't he doing this? Eh, uh, he's back east. Yeah, he should be over here working on his own bike, put his butt to work. At least doing this stuff? That's easy, isn't it? Or filming his own shit? Uh, film is easy. Is it getting freer yet? I think so. I don't think so. I think you're just getting tired. Or you want it to be freer, so you have to quit doing that. <laughs> quit doing what? This? Yeah. Probably spend three, four hours doing this and not make it go anywhere. No, it won't take that long. I think I'm getting the hang of it. You gotta pull with one side and push with the other side. Uh, you got a combination of both. It's just like the mode, you gotta stagger your foot, your up and down a little bit. You know what this does for you though? It makes you. Makes my arms hurt. Makes you have to think like the little engine. Makes my fingers hurt too when it's inside the sharp bushing holes. Yeah, I'm feeling that. Nice action in there. Yeah, it rubs off your, it rubs your calluses down a little bit. So. Ooh. <laughs> All right, look at you get screwing up when you're helping. <laughs> That's the story of my short life. I bang less than you do soon. First one motor. <clears throat> yeah, people ask the motor to run backwards. Yep, it'll run just fine backwards. Why doesn't it? Because the air is on the wrong side. Oh. If you put the carburetor and exhaust pipe and, and turn it over that way, it would run both ways. Oh. The timing would be a little bit retarded on the backwards direction, but it'll still run. So if you got two carburetors, will it run backwards? And you do the two, ex two intake or two front heads? Whichever way you shove the crank is the way it will turn. Hmm. It'll run that way. Of course, the oil system be kind of not working too well. No, it might be hard to start too. No. Really? Because no, the tranny push when you kick it, the tranny pushes it. Like I said, you'll turn the right direction. Oh. You ever had a motor run backwards on you before? Um, I think when I kick it once and it snapped back at me. Yeah, there you go. It backwards. It doesn't feel too good when that happens. Especially when you get some oil. No. <laughs> In the way of the air cleaner. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It hurt any. Kind of makes tough parts. Isn't that an eastern part? Uh, well, maybe. Cam's not. Hmm. Cam's doing more horribly. That's why oh. it didn't fit. So it's a stock. That's why they didn't fit. <laughs> oh. Like the brand new cams. Is that a stock Harley <clears throat> cam? Yeah, it's a brand new Harley cam, but it's an old one. Wow. NOS. New old stock. New old shit. There you go. I think this is about it for the lapping compound. Hitting the bottom of the bucket there, boss. Oh, man. <clears throat> Goop. Well, it better correct itself here, otherwise that's just how it's gonna be, huh? Have to make some more goop. <laughs> okay, that is supposed to sit down on the side of there where it belongs. I'm gonna put that cam in there to hold it in there, so I have to fight it. Okay. 
Are you lining up the timing marks too? Yep. Does it make a difference if you don't? Yep. Even at this stage? Yep. Huh. Cams are lapped already. Oh, so all the grooves have to line up because they're lapped to fit at that spot, huh? That's where they're lapped to. Yeah. Oh, neat. It just sucks it right in, huh? She'll suck it right up. That's pretty cool. It's a rotation. Once you get something moving, you can shove it some other direction. Getting this move from zero, it doesn't want to move. That's, yeah, that makes sense. Just kick it lightly, then you can move where you want it to. That works with everything. Called let's physics. Let's give it a boot really quick. So let's do Newton Newton vector or forces and shit like that. You know, all kinds of fancy names for it. You can squeak this time, see? <clears throat> nope, no squeaking. Here we go, start squeaking. Right. A little freer. Have you ever seen anybody chop a Sportster transmission off the case and then yeah. hook it up to a big twin? Chop them, yes. Hook them back up to something. Not very often because there's no real way of hooking anything up. So they kind of get lost. Really? You mm -hmm. couldn't just put it into the frame or a put it into like a specially modified frame. Still gotta figure out how you're gonna hold it. When you cut the back of the case off, there's nothing to hold to. <clears throat> oh, because you cut that rear motor mount off. Cut everything off that has metal. You can't make a new uh, motor mount like these ones here. I have to weld the back of the case. You'd essentially have to copy how a big twin is mounted. Huh. You have to make it all. Everything has to be made. Yeah, new seat post, new... And the case is real thin all through there because it's not made to be supported there. It's made to just seal between the two sides. Uh -huh. So it's real thin. So you'd have to really build that material up. Yep. Re-weld everything. Put your warp piss out of everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyone who does do that probably, probably wouldn't last very long, huh? Actually, I've seen a lot of weird bracketry made to do it. You have to come up with something somehow to support it. How about running a Sportster with a belt drive? I know they made those. Yeah, I got some of that crap laying around. Do they work any better? Or? Turns up the kicker gears real good. The belt? Yep. Yeah. It runs dry. After you seal everything up, you can't ever seal <coughs> it anyway. It's, you know, it's impossible to seal everything because it's not made to be sealed. Hmm. Kicker gear runs dry. It loses, it, loses the kicker. So you just lose your knee. What you're saying? Oh, it all wads up inside the case and makes a big mess. Okay, <coughs> back a little bit. 